Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will continue talking about radio transmission, in particular how the AM radio works. Um, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens presented on Unizor.com. I suggest you to watch this lecture from the website because this lecture is just part of the course and the website contains menu and all the lectures are logically connected plus every lecture has detailed notes there are some problem solving um, there is a prerequisite course called math for teens on the same website which i do recommend you to take uh, you do need a lot of math when studying physics okay so back to um, radio transmission so am radio it stands for amplitude modulation radio um, and we are talking about radio in terms of transmitting sound actually obviously right now radio waves are electromagnetic waves and they are delivering television uh, images uh, data etc etc but just for our purposes it's quite sufficient to talk about sound all right now what is at the heart of any kind of radio transmission and receiving well we were all studying so-called lc circuit which is basically a capacitor and inductor connected into a circuit and the main property of this circuit is that um, with proper arrangement uh, additional sources of energy etc the um, uh, uh, oscillations of electric current will occur in this uh, circuit in both directions with certain periodicity with certain frequency um, now in many cases there is also a resistor here so it's sometimes it's called RLC circuit but in any case it's the inductor and capacitor which are actually playing this oscillation role so it's capable of oscillating at certain frequency which depends on parameters of these two devices and if we ignore uh, for a while the resistor it will be um, the um, frequency, angular frequency, will be calculated using this formula. That's what we know. So it has certain property. Now, if we will make this a variable uh, capacitor, then we can change this, and we can change this resonate frequency, which means that it can serve as a receiver. Now, as far as transmit, well, obviously receiver, if you will have some kind of antenna here connected maybe with another inductor through some kind of um, inductive uh, transformation of energy. So with an antenna, it, can, it, 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 it serves as a receiver. Now, with an antenna and a good source of energy, some kind of batteries or whatever, um, the oscillations of this particular circuit, oscillation of current in this circuit, again using a much more powerful obviously antenna, can receive uh, can can serve as a transmitter of the oscillations. Now, in practice, we have many different we have many different. Uh, um, sources of uh, electromagnetic um, oscillations, uh, many different transmitters, and whenever we want to receive a particular signal, now all these are transmitting at different frequencies, which depends on characteristics of circuits in any case, and this one can, using the tuning, can basically tuned to this or this or this and that's how we uh, receive a particular signal from a particular transmitter 
Okay, that's all great and dandy, and uh, what's the purpose of all this? I mean, why do we have to transmit oscillations of certain frequency? They don't carry any information, they don't carry so far any sound, so we have to somehow impose another input, a sound, to this transmission. So, it will somehow will be received and somehow interpreted and somehow produce the sound which we can hear. So this is a completely different task. So one task is just to transmit certain frequency from this guy, another frequency from this, another frequency from this. It's called carrier frequency. The signal is carried by these frequencies. And a completely different story is how to impose sound. So we need some kind of good idea. Well, and idea came <coughs> in terms of amplitude modulation. So here is basically the story. Let's just assume that these oscillations are of significantly high frequency. Now, the sound has a different frequency. Usually, the, the sound which human ear senses is from 20 hertz, which means oscillations per second. So it's actually 1 over second, the dimension, to 20,000 hertz. So let's assume that this range is significantly slower, I mean less frequent. These numbers are less than the frequency of this guy. Which means on the graph it will look something like this. The idea of amplitude modulation is let's reduce the amplitude of these uh, oscillations of carrier, base carrier frequency in sync with these. So in, in this particular case I will impose um, increasing or uh, decreasing the amplitude of these oscillations in sync with this guy. And as a result I will have something like this. So the oscillation will still have exactly the same frequency. Frequency will be the same. But the amplitude, this is the constant amplitude, which we were talking about before. Now, with a sound imposing on, the, uh, uh, on these oscillation, uh, oscillation as far as their amplitude is, it's the same frequency, but different amplitude. Let's not talk about how. What's important is the idea. So this idea came to somebody's mind, and we are not talking about who that was. There was a big discussion about this, who was the first guy. But whoever the first guy was, he basically came up with this idea. And since oscillations are transmitted and can be tuned to this particular radio station, for, for, for example, we will have corresponding oscillations in the LC uh, circuit on the receiver side. Now, if these oscillations are of variable amplitude, these oscillations will be of variable amplitude, obviously. I mean, we can uh, somehow make it stronger, or whatever it is, the amplifiers can be involved. These are all um, fringes. These are less important than the main, imp main idea. So the main idea is we will impose this sound to change the amplitude, and this change of amplitude will be transmitted to a receiver. Receiver will tune in because tuning is based on the frequency only. So if it's tuned to this particular radio station, it will always receive these signals. But the signals, but the signals which we receive as a, a resonance in uh, in the receiver LC uh, circuit will have different amplitude. And these amplitudes will be, again, in sync with the sound waves which uh, uh, have been put at the source of the whole thing. So this is the idea.
Okay. Now, um, what's next? Okay. The frequency which is uh, used in uh, AM radio, the, cr the frequency of the base of the carrier frequency, are from 540 thousand hertz to million six hundred hertz. But usually people are uh, using kilohertz, kilohertz, which is thousands of hertz, which is 540 kilohertz to 1600 kilohertz. So these are different frequencies which are allocated for different radio stations which would like to transmit in a, the, the AM radio. I mean, there are other principles. There is a frequency modulator, which is FM radio. That would be the subject of the next lecture. But right now, for the AM radio, um, the, the standard, at least for the United States, I'm not sure about other countries, but for the United States, these are um, the uh, minimum and maximum uh, frequencies. Uh, these AM radio transmitters uh, can use. So, just for example, there is a WCBS radio which um, I can tune in in New York. It has 880 kilohertz between these two. That's what that particular other st station have other. So, the uh, different uh, frequencies are assigned to different radio stations. They are probably applying for some kind of a license. They're supposed to pay something, I guess, for this. So, and they have assigned frequency. Usually, I think it's increments of 10, like 880 kilohertz and 890 maybe. I'm not sure exactly. But anyway, it's assigned. These frequencies are fixed and assigned to different radio stations. If all the different frequencies are already taken, that means that there is no more new stations unless they will buy something, some other old station, with their frequencies. Okay, so, as you see, this, these frequencies, any of them, even the smallest one, is significantly greater than the highest um, uh, sound frequency. Now, why is this important? Well, I mean, obviously the precision of the sound, the quality of the sound, depends on how, um, how closely this curve on the sound will be transmitted and received and interpreted by the receiver side. No matter how good your mic your microphone is on this side and how well it uh, translates the sound into electric current unless this thing is a very high quality we will lose the uh, the details because the sound waves are not really such smooth sound waves to tell you the truth the sound waves are really something like this because it, it can any sound contains many different um, uh, frequencies which are kind of superpositioned onto each other. So it's a combination of, um, if you wish, um, of different trigonometric functions like sine of 2x plus 3 uh, sine of uh, 1.5x, etc., etc. So each one has its own frequency because the voice produced by the person, for, for, for example, it's not just one fixed in uh, a, a fixed frequency on which there is a sound. Like uh, even that has probably many different octaves combined uh, into into one sound. So it's oscillations with different frequencies. And they and these fr different frequencies are superimposed onto each other, and the resulting current in the electrical after the microphone, the resulting current will have really very very um, broken kind of a um, uh, of a line, if you wish. 
And considering there are many details, you need many very high frequency of carrier to basically reflect with each uh, amplitude, I reflect corresponding sound. So the more um, broken kind of uh, line of the sound, the more frequent I need the carrier to get into each with, with certain oscillation to get into each peak or trough uh, of the sound. So that's why it's very important to have much higher frequency in the carrier than um, the frequency of the sound itself. Now, let me just give you an example. Um, there is a one particular note, uh, I think it's called high A, and it's um, High A is what? Okay, five, high A is 440. Okay, high eight, high A is 440. Uh, hertz. So there is a pitch, one particular note on the piano, for for example, um, and this particular note is in oscillation with this particular frequency. I mean, it's just a standard, basically, for musical instruments, for example. Now, if you take, for instance, this carrier frequency and this note. What's the difference? This is hertz and this is kilohertz, so it's 1,000. So it's 2. 2,000 times more frequent this one than this. Which means that for each oscillation of the sound, I have 2,000 oscillations of the carrier signal. So that's relatively good quality. However, as you go into higher pitches, for instance, the very, very high pitch, which is 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz, the difference is between 20 kilohertz and 80 kilohertz is only 440 times. So this is 2,000, this is 440. It's lower quality. So the high pitches will be represented by smaller number of um, uh, base oscillation, carrier ca carrier waves uh, oscillations, which means it's not as precise, let's say. So that's why AM transmission is considered to be of a lower quality, and uh, something like a hi-fi sound usually is not transmitted through AM. There are different technologies, which we will talk about next lecture. But this was the first, and I, I would say the most understandable, at least for me, quite frankly, uh, how the amplitude modulation can be used to uh, transmit the sound. Now, um, another interesting point is the uh, wave lengths. Now, if this is a frequency, so it's 880,000 oscillations per second. Now, the radio waves are propagating with a speed of, si uh, of s uh, 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 the speed of light, which is 300,000 kilometers meter per second. That's the speed. So this is the speed. Every second, the the, the light goes by 300 million meters. Okay. Now. Um, every second we have this many um, oscillations. So if we will divide C by F, we will have lambda, the length of the wave, the wavelength. It's one period how long it is. Long. This is the period from to. Okay. Now, um, so in this particular case, for this particular frequency, and this. Uh, approximate, this is approximate speed of light, um, the lambda would be 341 meter. So the period, 
the le I mean, the length uh, of, of the wave is 341 meter. It's relatively long, which means it could go around large objects. So that's why a M radio is is traveling on certain long distances. More than that, um, in certain cases, um, we have around the Earth we have so-called ionosphere. So it's a uh, basically um, electrically charged uh, particles and uh, they present like a, like a mirror so to speak and the electromagnetic waves of this type uh, of this length they are reflected from ionosphere which means that um, if, if this is the earth and this is the source of uh, electromagnetic waves, and this is ionosphere, it can actually go relatively far. I mean, obviously, it's getting uh, uh, weaker and weaker, the signal. <coughs> but in any case, I, 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 I do remember, basically, when I, when I lived in the Soviet Union, I, uh, I was using the um, short waves um, radio to basically have signals from um, Great Britain, from, from United States, from France, etc. So, um, there are different um, ranges and the range for AM radio is usually sufficient to transmit, well, it's called long waves, um, middle range waves and short waves as opposite to ultra short waves which are um, only um, can, can be received only within the direct <coughs> non obstructed so to speak um, uh, distance so that's basically all about <coughs> AM radio now the last question is how to implement this modulation so how to convert sound into um, different amplitude. So how can we modulate a base frequency using the input from the sound? Well, this is something which can be done again many, many different ways. And uh, basically the simplest thing is to introduce a variable resistor so if you have a microphone, here comes the microphone. And uh, obviously the result of the microphone is certain current in certain circuit. Now, if this current somehow is triggering a variable resistor, and that variable resistor somehow affects uh, the At this variable resistor somehow is part of this circuit which is producing the high frequency carrier um, uh, waves then obviously the since it's a resistor it will change the amplitude uh, of the um, uh, current in this particular circuit without changing the uh, frequency of oscillations because frequency depends on primarily on these two. I mean, resistor is also kind of affects the frequency, but uh, we can we can really manipulate it in some way so that it's not really a, a big factor. But what's the big factor for a resistor is it will change the amplitude because uh, according to the Ohm's law, um, the the current is inversely proportional to resistor. You increase resistor, the current goes down. So that's how you modulate, that's how you change the amplitude in the transmitting circuit. And in the receiving circuit, since it's received through the antenna, the weaker signal will be weaker and the stronger will be stronger. So that's how you transmit. And then obviously you need amplifiers and, and filters and all that. Let me tell you one thing. Whatever I'm talking about and making even some circuits uh, on the board, it has absolutely um, 
no comparison in complexity with the circuits which are really used. I mean, uh, the, the radio technology uh, has developed for, uh, what, 150 years or something like that, uh, or more. And obviously, the quality and the speed and all these m m convenience um, I is significantly changed since the, the time uh, when it was invented. But my purpose is not to go into the details of contemporary implementation of radio. This is for radio engineers, this is for specials. This course is basically for people who are interested in physics in general, and that's why I'm presenting principles, how it started actually, because the principle remains. This circuit is still there. It's implemented not using some kind of a uh, archaic uh, lamp-based uh, triodes or whatever. Um, it's based on contemporary integrated circuits, etc. So the technology has grew up, but the principles, and that's exactly what I'm trying to convey to you, principles are still there, and it's very important to understand the principle before you go into the details, and that depends on your profession, etc. It's only for professionals, obviously. Principles can actually be shared with everybody. Um, that's it. Uh, I do suggest you to, um, uh, to to read the notes for this lecture on the website on unizor.com. So you go to Physics 14's course. This is the part which is called Waves, and then in this part I have a radio um, uh, part, radio topic, so to speak, and this is one of the lectures. Uh, amplitude mod modulation, one of the lectures about radio. That's it, thanks very much, and good luck. <laughs>